Welcome, guys, to another episode of The Candy Show. I am your host, Candy. Guys, we have a very, very special guest tonight. I have to tell you, I'm very excited. Guys, I want you to welcome, number one, iconic. She's icon. She's an icon, so remember that. She's also legendary, and she is also R&B royalty. Guys, I want you to welcome NAACP Image Award winner, international artist, recording artist, singer, songwriter, businesswoman, Miss Superwoman herself, Miss Karen White. Woo! Candy girl! Look, I definitely feel like a superwoman with that intro. Thank you. You is are so me? welcome. Yes. Is that me? All of that? No. Nah. <laughs> Thank you, baby. <laughs> you are so welcome. Thank you so much for taking your time out today. Tell us where you're actually coming from, what city and state. I am in Atlanta, Georgia. Well, a suburb of Atlanta, Georgia. Yep. Okay. Well, I'm in Indianapolis, Indiana. Yes. That's what I just, I just did a, a little post on Facebook. And I was like, where? I don't know why I thought Chicago. But because that's, we, we that's saw it. Okay. Yes. She's, no, Indianapolis. So where Face is, Face is born, right? He's from Indianapolis, right? Yes, ma'am. Yes, yeah, so ma'am. Not, that's the home of the, the, the baby face, huh? Yes, ma'am. <laughs> yes, ma'am. So let's go ahead and take it back. I just recently met you for the first time and mm -hmm. also saw you perform a few weeks ago back in Chicago, R&B Royalty. Wow. Tell me a little bit about that before we get into the backstory. I, first of all, I'm letting you know, I was very honored, number one, to first of all, see you. Second of all, and being able to talk to you, meet you, and just be in your presence. So I'm very honored and I'm very humbled and I'm so excited to see what you have going on. I appreciate that because most people don't realize that um, it's been a while, you know, and when I said that, I don't think people really know my story is that I, you know, I left the business for 17 years at the height of my career. So I had left. Everybody's where, looking, searching for Karen White. Where is she? No, but uh, so for me, I hadn't been in Chicago since Bobby Brown, when I opened up for Bobby Brown back in nine, making eight, 1990. So can you believe that? It's been oh that long. Even yeah. your own personal career is just not taking you to Chicago? No. Yeah. Just because I left. Wow. When, I, when I was at the height of my career, of course I went. But okay. I'm saying I left, so I hadn't been touring. I wasn't doing any business. I, I had stopped singing. And then I left my I left that after my my, my album, Make Him Do Right, in 94. So, so since 90, yeah. So I hadn't, I didn't tour. I my career, I'm a very unusual artist, I'm going to say. It's kind of like my story is a little bit, not like Tina Turner in the sense of got beat down by Ike, but that, you know, it's it's unconventional, you know, where I had success very fast, got married to one of the greatest icons in the business, songwriter, producer Terry Lewis, had a baby, left the business at the height of the business, and then uh, came back in it after 17 years. You know how, remember how Tina had to, she said, I got my name, and that's what I got. She had to build it back up, playing these little clubs. That's what I had to do. I had to come back and, you know, where is Karen White? Can she, how does she look? How does she sound? Is she still valuable and marketable? So all of this had to happen. And I've been, uh, I, I came back into the business in 2011, the end of 2011 or 2012. So it's been a journey since then. Um, it's like, it was kind of like starting over a little bit, but I still had my name, but I just had a lot of proving to do. <laughs> and there you go. And you know what, speaking of that, according to what I saw on your Instagram page, <laughs> people, people didn't know that you had left just because I of, the excitement and what did you do you stood up and you sung your own song and people didn't know tell me about that because that looked like that was an awesome time oh I know you yeah you're just talking about the fact that yeah and the beautiful thing about it is that it shows you when you have timeless music even though I left my music never did and then 
of course, you know, the young girls have been keeping it alive. Uh, you know, I know Latoya Luckett was singing it at one point. And uh, what's her name? Heather Headley. And then now Tamar. And, you know, so it, and then I was just honored, you know, to see, uh, you know, my girl, Jennifer. Um, why can't I think of her last name? Hudson. You know, Jennifer Hudson. Hudson, I'm yes. <laughs> hey, J-Lo, not J-Lo. Uh, Jennifer Hudson and, and Queen Latifah and uh, Yolanda Adams and, and, and Fantasia singing it. So yeah, it's been my journey. It's like, I can't wait to do my story though, but because it's, um, it's a lot of, it's, it's like you kind of, you know, the Phoenix rises, you know, with the, from the ashes type of thing. And um, cause most people don't, they think it was just as simple as, you know, Oh, I didn't know you never left. So they don't even understand all this stuff that's been happening behind the scenes of me <laughs> trying to, you know, get in back, back, you know, get back to my rightful place and status. You know, I wouldn't say rightful, but just to my status of what I, what my legacy. And then this year, I was honored um, with the, as an icon, the soul music icon um, with Black Music Honors. So myself, Tevin, Kevin Campbell, and Carrie Hilson, and the Whispers, and um, I forgot who else. Forgive me. But uh, so it's been a great year for me. So I'm so glad that and I'm, you know, doing my thing and I'm in I fell back in love with music because at one point I I lost hope in myself. Uh, you know what I mean? And I went through some uh, dark times, you know, my mom passed. I went through a divorce and moved and, you know, I just kind of second guess, did I still want to do this? How could all this happen? You know, I had so much success. And so uh, my story is, you know, very, very, is one that I, I definitely would say, I'm just thankful that God, when, you know, when he has a plan for your life, there's nothing that you can do. You understand? It's like, yes, you better man. surrender. And there was, and this is per it's so purposeful now. He's opening doors and and it's just, it's, it was a lot of growing and healing that I had to do. And, and I'm uh, glad you even brought some of those things up because you talked about wanting to tell your story. And yeah. here on the Candy Show, we definitely like to go back, but I also want to make sure we get some of your new projects out there too. So we won't oh, forget yeah. those. Now, okay. I understand that Gail and the Storm is a little bit loosely designed around your mm -hmm. your personal yeah. life now I yes. know that yes. that's, that's one of your projects you're pushing right now so tell everyone about Gail and yeah. the Storm let me see this so let me see that Derek passed me that so yeah Gail and the Storm is a film loosely based on my life we did it with two college students it's a low uh what we say not micro budget film and it's about a singer <laughs> a famous singer who stepped away from the business at the height of her career. And she hooks up with a revolutionary music producer and manager, and he tries to get her back into the business. And it's like, I kind of, um, the music is based on like the 70s. So, you know, I kind of channeled some Shaka Khan, Tina Marie, some Rick James, some uh, Al Green, you know, some Tina Turner. So yeah, so pick up, the soundtrack is dope. You can get it at karenwhite.me and then you can also rent or buy the film at galeandthestorm.com so it was it was uh, my first project that I um, executive produced and co-wrote so it, it was a you know my partner and I we were taking acting lessons in Los Angeles and this is uh before I got back into the business and so we were go going to these auditions I would go and I would get some of them but some of them I wouldn't and I just said, you know, we just said, you know what, let's do our own thing. And um, we did. And it's very, it's it's so liberating to to take your power back and say, you know, if I can't get it, if I can't, if you won't, if you won't make my film, I will. You get what I'm saying? Because we were in the day of like, you know, nobody can stop you from doing anything except for yourself. So it was so liberating to say, dang, we did a movie. We did that. Because, you know, not even... Actors, famous actors and actresses haven't done their own, you know, physically done their movies. So, and we did it on a shoestring budget and it was great. So, and I did mm -hmm. get a chance to check out the movie and I, I actually, 
I loved it. And let me tell you why. Because first and foremost, I and for the most more for the most part, a lot of the world have really much haven't seen you doing too much acting. Now you have had some acting spots here and there, but to do this in your own way. Oh yeah, this was it. Yeah. I said, wait a minute, Miss Karen White is cussing. I was like, what? <laughs> no, that was no, that was Gail Storm. That wasn't yeah. Karen. Yeah, that was Gail. But to Gail Storm could cuss her butt off, couldn't she? <laughs> but but that was not playing, huh? From yeah, everything, not to see the movie to see what we're talking about. Yes, yeah, this was a scene where you know her ex lover. You know, he was the leader of the band, and then he was trying to you know, do some, some, some dirty things. So you got to watch the movie and, and, you know, Gail Storm cusses him out. <laughs> but you know what? A lot of people can relate to that story. Oh, yeah. I know I sure can. Oh, good, good, from, good. Yeah. <laughs> from everything. I did, oh, yeah. I, I did the same thing a little bit after doing what I did in my, did my last event back in 2010, I took a long break and got back into 2016. So I can understand with Gail and I can I can also relate to Miss Karen White by taking yourself back for a minute. Right, exactly. <laughs> yeah, you had to do that. But it was it was so it was so much fun. And also the it was loosely based on my life and the founding member of the group Club Nouveau. Um he was my manager. So Hannibal's character was based on him. So he was trying to get me back into the business. So most people don't know that. You guys remember Club Nouveau. Situation number nine. Yeah. Blowing my mind. Yeah. And look at all. No, they did. Room, they, they had a bunch of hits. They got <laughs> around, you know. you, Yeah. Y'all remember Jay King. So yeah, he executed. He produced it as well with us. So, so tell me so a little bit about that. Because I think you, uh, you have a partner that also was with you that's in the film. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah, Derek, Derek Muhammad. Yeah, he's he's the alchemist. He's over here. He works with me in the film side of uh, Karen White Enterprises. And the beautiful part about Derek is that you know when I lost my way, you know he was he's getting into the business as an older gentleman. So when when we met each other, it was like, why don't we do this shit ourselves? Like we don't need to wait on Hollywood. You know, I I showed on one, and he really. He really gave me that 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 gritty, just that that mentality to to say that Apple, we can do it ourselves. We don't need, you know, we don't need to, you know, we build it and they will come. And so I was used to being signed to Warner Brothers. So I, you know, that was kind of different for me because I'm used to doing three hundred thousand dollar videos. You know what I mean? <laughs> so I'm like, uh, indie film, what? You know, is my lighting gonna be right? No, it was funny. I took I took look. This was this was me just saying, you know what? Okay, let's just do it. And I'm so glad because it, like I said, now we have other uh, other projects, various projects at, um, in development right now with that we're excited about with some other big name actresses and actors coming up. So, um, you know, I'm excited to just explore all of this. And it's this is the beautiful part about, you know, when you when you get fearless and when you understand your purpose. You know, you're not fearful of anything. You just, you know, letting God open the doors. And we want to do entertainment that is for the culture. We want to make sure there's a story that's, you know, not just um, showing a, you know, a girl shaking her butt or, you know, we want to, we want to, we want to have motivating and uplifting entertainment for, for that show black people in, in positive areas of, um, of life. I like that. I like that. Now I'm going to take you all the way back. All the way back. Let's take it back. <laughs> Let's take it back to the old school. Uh -uh. <laughs> okay, Miss Karen White. Now, I've already expressed to you, I grew up listening to your music. So, number one, once again, thank you. Um, so, tell a little bit about you and as far as what made you want to become a person in the entertainment industry? Uh, <laughs> I was a ham. Um, I love, I'm the baby. And um, I've always, hmm, I've always just always loved entertaining and putting together groups. Um, ah, man, 
being a uh, producer, a promoter, all of it, you know, because I'm trying, let's put together this, you know, for the talent show, let's do this, the neighborhood thing, you know, it was always in me. And I was just fortunate enough to grow up in Los Angeles and to, you know, the land of city of dreams. And um, it really, uh, being in talent shows at a young age, running track, very popular. I just, just, you know, real cool chick. I just was focused. You know, you could not tell me I was not going to do whatever I set out to do. And then I realized that um, I got that a lot from, you know, my mom, just very determined, but, but not afraid to do the work because a lot of people just think it's supposed to happen like that. You know what I mean? But it's like you, I was telling uh, someone about in an interview about in my sixth grade graduation speech, I spoke and I, I really shouldn't, I don't know if I was valedictorian because I wasn't really that smart, but I don't know what <laughs> I was, but I probably had the balls. I'm just going to say I was valedictorian. <laughs> and yeah. Cause I'm like, was I valedictorian? but I did, I spoke and I said at the end of my speech, it was called in this chain of success, let me be a link. And I remember saying, I, Karen White will succeed. And I remember my dad going, oh my God. It reminded me of my, you know, my mother. You know what I mean? He probably was like, oh God. But yeah, I just have always been, you know, whether it was going to be music or once I left the business, uh, I became a businesswoman doing real estate, flipping homes. It didn't matter because you know, I just had the drive. You know what I mean? I realized, I found that out about myself. I was like, God, I never really realized that I'm just a go-getter. You know what I mean? Some people just are just, you know what I mean? They're just destined. They're going to do something. <laughs> oh, I have many friends that every time you turn around, they're trying to do some new business adventure. Oh, my God. You know, it's like, just keep going, keep going. And You're I love the energy. entrepreneur, huh? Yes. So, and, but the thing about that, let's shout out to the, to, you know, to the one wonderful superwomen out there who are, you know, definitely trying to be somebody and do something and, and, um, in business, it's just, you know, it's, it's, I definitely want to say that, you know, women, we just are so, I, I, I'm in awe of women because I think we're, I don't know where we get the, the I know we have a desire, but we, it's like, we have kids, we have work, but we still have, you know, our dreams. And I, and when I see somebody doing it all and doing it on a high level. I'm like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't know how we, I mean, really in awe. I'm like, cause we some bad Mickey Fickies. <laughs> Women are some cold pieces, ain't yes. they? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. A, a man could not, not do it. They will not be denied. It's like, where's the time? Where's the, you know what I mean? When you think about it. So I'm just always in awe and um, I'm just so glad that I am a woman and I'm, I love women and I love to support them. And I think the sisterhood is just so important. And um, that's why I started a foundation in 2019 and I gave out grants and I'm going to be as soon as I can really get it off, you know, get it off his feet. I want to have workshops where we, you know, are talking about business and fi you know, uh, financial literacy. I was talking to a hairdresser who's, who just did my hair the other day and she was telling me, you know, she makes a lot of money and I'm, you know, I'm just talking to her about, well, do you know about, um, you know, that you should be, you can have your own S corp and pay yourself a salary and then you can deduct your 401k you can max it out and then you can also do a defined benefit plan which you can put away and by the time you're you know 65 that's 30 years and she was looking at me like nobody ever told me any of this information and it's just like we don't know a lot so I was like I really need to do this foundation because um have this I need to have this women's workshop for us because I realize a lot of us don't really know how to grow the business and how to, you know, just those things that are very important, the root of a business. So I'm hoping that we can all get together, love on it, love on another, go on love with another, have great music, fellowship, and then have these workshops. So that's my goal, Candy. Okay. So okay. hopefully I'll be able to make that happen next year. I've been really, you know, COVID kind of slowed me down. 
Now, was that is that Supernova? No, that no, that's this. It's called the Karen White Foundation. Okay, the Karen White Foundation. Yeah, and also let me just say that if you, you know, it's for women entrepreneurs and business. So if you want to go to the Karen White Foundation dot com and fill out the questionnaire, and I'll have the database, and um, I would definitely do, you know, be able to start back doing some grants that I was doing, but I would definitely want to have this whole, um, um, what is it called? Uh, Workshop. Yeah. Yeah, workshop. So yeah, so yeah. So put your name, sis. Is it you guys? Okay, go ahead on and uh, fill that out. KarenWhiteFoundation dot com. You know, I think it's interesting with that type of a vision that you want to put forth. Have you thought about incorporating incorporating that when you're out on tour and you're doing your spot dates? Have you thought about that? Go ahead, Candy. <laughs> I need, yeah, I, I, I want to talk to you. You got some ideas because. I definitely want to. There's so many things, you know what I'm saying? And and that would be beautiful because I, there was a lady there that was, she was she was crying and it, I don't know if she said, what did she say she had? She, she said she had MS and she mm -hmm. said, I waited for you for 30 years and it just touched my heart and kind of made me tear up because she said, I am a superwoman because I was able to, you know, beat this or get better, you know, and I was just like, wow, I mean, I mean, it's just uh, so much, so, so much work to do, and it would be beautiful to do that. I can definitely, it's well, huh? you might as well get a vendor spot, get a vendor table while you're doing your thing, getting prepared, have a vendor out there talking about okay. the Karen White Foundation, getting people signed up, yeah. get the email. Right. Yeah, that's, that's a great idea. Okay, we'll talk to you about that, Candy. I appreciate that. Yes, ma'am. No problem. Now, you mentioned it, Miss Superwoman, and how impactful that song was and still is to oh, still a lot like of us. I mean, I'm still using it in certain conversations. I can't be a Superwoman. I don't know. You know, I'm still. Right. Tell me about how you feel. How, did you even know back then how this would be? <laughs> pretty much your your first woman's anthem no i because you know you got to think about it i'm 22 going on 23 what do you know i mean come on that only comes from life experience you know what i'm saying so for me i'm just uh i i, I definitely know my mother you know was a, a superwoman she supported me and her and my dad got divorced and i saw her you know we had a salon in the back of our home and you know she also so you know she was an entrepreneur as well as had a job and you know bought me a new car at 16 which we really couldn't afford to do you know I'm like oh god what the heck um but um yeah but you know so I, I had no clue that it was going to affect women today you know I, I just hear stories even from men that'll say like dang I love you because my mama loved me my mama was going through some tough times and you and you know some real bad times and you your song made her happy and I remember her clinging to it you know so they just like come here I just want to hug you know what I mean and that smell that everything brings back that time of them how their mother felt you know and it, it may have even helped so so you know help them so that was beautiful to hear a man say it from that perspective and of course you know women just say, you know, you gave me the strength to leave or to, you know, to realize, you know, really, yeah, I don't want to be taken for granted anymore, you know. I, and it's not a feminist song because I never wanted to say that I'm, I'm not trying to say I don't, I don't believe in love and I want to be the head because that's, that would be a whack relationship. You know what I mean? I'm just, and what, what it's saying is I'm not your superwoman. I just, I don't want to be taken for granted. I want you you know you have a to, voice right it, I want to treat yeah I want ways to be treated and you know so those are the things that you know and and today even internationally I mean it is crazy when I go to South Africa man they it is it is like I'm a, a they call me a, they call it an evergreen mm -hmm. where there's a song that you know like I say for instance even like a Dionne Warwick song that's an evergreen you know um you know, walk on by or whatever, you know what I mean? It's just, uh, they hand this down. So all the generations know the music. So I would go, 
I'll be in South Africa and, you know, and there'll be eight year olds that know who I am and sing my song. And, you know, it's like, wow, they, it's like, it's, it's like mandatory. Like the women, you hand it down to the next generation. And that's, a, it, that's, that's a song that will never get yeah, old because right. every day there are multiple women in this position feeling mm-hmm. like this mm-hmm. just to make their man happy or make their household complete. I don't know what woman hasn't felt oh, that load. Oh yeah, felt that load and not put herself and not even putting yourself first. It's just not forgetting. <laughs> Don't forget you because you're the head. You know, you're the, I wouldn't say the head, but you, you know, the woman, if, if mama ain't happy, then it's, you know, it's it's not a happy house. You know what I mean? So I'm just, like I said, I, I just, um, I'm just grateful that, you know, because I didn't write the song, L.A. Reed and Babyface and Daryl Simmons wrote it. I'm just blessed that they saw that in me, you know, because eventually, like to me now, when I sing that song, Oh yeah, <laughs> I'm a superwoman because I've I've gone through some things. I couldn't sing it was I didn't have you know I hadn't been through enough life yet yet you know now I've been through the disappointment the pain and having to you know just totally revamp and and reach and stretch and just you know just try to be the best version of yourself. So it, it hits a different way now when I sing it and I'm just I'm just um. I'm just happy that it all kind of caught up to me and God has a way. So maybe I was meant to, you know, I'm not going to say, cause there was some reason why I, I didn't, I stopped singing. Mm-hmm. So, but I have such a passion now and I'm just, I feel like the race isn't won by the swift, but he who endures to the end. And I'm, I'm just really thankful. And now when I sing, and I'm sure you could feel that I can, there's just such a love for what I do and I'm appreciative of it. Whereas when I, mm-hmm. you hit that right on the head because I was just about to say that when you said what you said to prep it, mm-hmm. you didn't even have to say it because understanding if the good Lord allows you to come through whatever trials and tribulations that an individual has, and you start singing, it's like, it means different. It's going to feel different because you've oh, yeah. been through so much and you're going to portray that on stage. Mm-hmm. And it's just going to, it's, it's just not going to be, Hey, I'm Karen White up here singing. Right. You know, exactly. my hits. You're going to come out. With it. <laughs> exactly. exactly. It's like, no, 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 baby. Come on. Exactly. Come here. Come here. Let's, we got to talk. But yeah. So it's, you know, I'm just, it's, you know, like if you know how you have, like, there was some artists that were, maybe underdogs you know I'm trying to think of like who it would be like some somebody that I like that maybe didn't get her just due like who are we, who do we talk about Derek because there's some artists that we you know back when we grew up and like wonder what happened with her so it was kind of like my story is just um you know it's just it's uh it's a unique one but like I, I keep telling people it's like god ain't finished with me yet i'm just, i feel like i'm just getting started because i had so much candy so fast and it was i always knew that i wanted to do to be an artist so i kind of had to i tell Derek this all the time i love that i was able to become just a person if that if you know what i mean and not a celebrity cuz i don't care i tell people if you see me and you I don't care. Good. If you know me good, if you don't, I'm still going to be, it doesn't matter. I'm not in this for anything other than I love what I do and I have a purpose and a mission for it. But it was, it was, it was, um, I love that. I kind of got humbled that way because all I knew was I was going to be famous and sing and sing and sing. And then I totally flipped it for, and that was a lot of years, 18 years. And, um, like I said, I just became just, you know, relatable and now I can really um I just feel like that's why the foundation and stuff I'm not just a celebrity talking you know what mm-hmm, I mean mm-hmm. I I, en- I enjoy the video that you put out I'm gonna go back again to that that concert you just attended the Bobby Brown concert because a lot of people didn't know that that was you singing and um, it was just it was as if what I'm what I'm understanding is as, as if the, the the host passed you the mic and then you started singing and next thing you know 
you hit the certain notes and you turn around and everybody's like, oh, that's her. Right. You know, right. so I get what you're saying. You kind of fell on the radar a little bit. And oh yeah, yeah, a lot of it. Yeah. And you know, so it's uh and you know how we are as black people. We love our entertainment, you know what I'm saying? But sometimes I feel like the generation uh after us, I guess every, I guess we all probably maybe I did this when I was younger too. I just don't feel like we really we really honor our legends. It's like, you know how like if you have kids they think their generation is the hottest. And you're trying, or, you know what I mean? Nobody, they don't have the proper respect. Like to me, like the, the the pop artists, the white artists, you know, they really treat their legends like God. You know what I mean? They're like, whoa, you know what I mean? And and I just feel like sometimes they just, you know, it's all about the youth. You know what I mean? It's like whoever's the hottest versus like they paved the way for a Rihanna, for a Beyonce. You know what I mean? So we got to, you know, because I was even talking to Patty about that, you know, she was like, yeah, they come in here and they just be tripping, you know, what I mean? you know what I mean? But it's like, I said, really? She was like, mm-hmm. she was like, I ain't fooling with them. Like, you know, so it's like, you know, give the reverence, give them the flowers, you know? And I said, well, I'm going to do this. <laughs> you know what I mean? I did the same thing to Stephanie, you know, to Stephanie Mills and Angela, 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 she corrected me. Angela, Angela, <laughs> Angela, Angela Winbush, Gladys, you know what I mean? So I like that. I like that because a lot of entertainers, and especially with you, you give the flowers, you make sure you recognize the people who not only you admire and still admire. And it's just like at the end of the day, somebody had to come first. Somebody had to come first. Somebody had, yeah, I mean, so, yeah. In, 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 yeah, when you think about how these artists used to sing for, you know, they used to have to walk through the back, you know, to, to get on stage, they couldn't use the bathrooms, you know what I mean? It all started there and everything just elevated, you know what I mean? So that's the thing I think we just have to remember. And even for me, I think if I would have really had the proper knowledge of self, I wouldn't have never left. For 18 years I would have fought through it I would have been tougher to go through what I was going through with my marriage and then just say come on you know the hit get back up come on okay you you through crying you through going through it you know come on get your butt you know this is what you do and then if you know I just it just took me a little later I just kind of lost it was I didn't I guess I didn't have the right people my mom had passed and I think that's a big part of it because she wasn't here Cause I know she would have said, baby, don't you stop singing. You know what I mean? You mm-hmm. love it. And I just, that's what I think happened is that I think I didn't have that person to, to, you know, to really remind me. Mm-hmm. And that's remembrance. Even when we're going through our darkest times, remembering who you are, where you come from, that alone can change your destiny. You Ooh. know what I mean? Knowing you. And not everybody gets the opportunity to know themselves. And when they do, sometimes it's too late. So Mm -hmm. given the fact that God allows you to still have the talent that he gave you, preserve it and sit back and work on you. Because while you sung Superwoman, you had to be like, you know what? I am human. I can't Mm -hmm. act like I'm not going through the same thing that I sing about or anybody else. For that matter so it, it I'm sure it humbled you and it had to take a step back and at the end of the day until you get yourself right you cannot be right for anyone else exactly and and not expecting anybody else to make you happy or to be mm-hmm. because no one could but you know it's just something where when you get so low and you know and that's what I want to let people know and that's a part of you know my story about you know pulling yourself back up and doing the work spiritually and the affirmations and, you know, being around positive people, speaking positive, speaking life and really being grateful. Like that little one tool. Cause I don't think we're grateful enough. If, cause if you think you're owed something, you're not, you're going to treat it different. You're going to probably abuse it. 
because you're not understanding how grateful you are. Mm -hmm. So when I, when I do it now, every time I get on stage, I'm just thankful. I'm like, wow, I'm, you know, I'm doing this and I'm happy. And before, you know, I'm on a stage, the biggest stage you can be on. I mean, Bobby Brown's the hottest thing, you know, of that time. And, but it was just like, okay, another show. That's how it looked at. Okay, another show. You know what I mean? But now I'm just like every little thing. I'm just, you know, I'm so happy. So I'm, so I'm like, it's okay that, that I, I feel like God pulled me out of the business. And now I have a proper respect for it. And like you said, you said one thing. You said, what did you say? You said, uh, God, it's a word. You said preserved. And that's my word. I, he preserved me. You know what I mean? Because people go, well, you look like Karen White. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> how are you not aging? I'm like, no, I'm, I mean, whatever. But I'm just, and I was telling them the big, they said, what is the secret? And I said, you want to know what the secret? You really want to know what the secret is? Forgiveness. And also, may I add to that, being able to say when you're done. Mm. When, when you step yourself away from whatever it may be. I Ooh. told I told myself in 2017, I'm done with the stress. When it almost took me out of here and it affected my health, I said nothing and no one is going to make me stressed out ever again. And I meant that. So wow. if it does keep you separated from other people, peace is what I want. And that's what I, I'm about. Peace. Me too. Yes. Peace. And people don't know Woo. when you find peace when you get peace oh it's nothing like it oh it, I know it really isn't it really isn't wow Ooh. that's beautiful that's powerful mm -hmm. yes ma'am yes ma'am now the progression of your all the albums individually mm -hmm. all the albums I can definitely tell that there was um some growth oh yeah some oh, hurt yeah. You, oh yeah hurt disappointment like I said, I had to forgive myself first and foremost, because I'm like, why did I do this? Why did I let myself? It's like, girl, you know, you all right. Like, you know what I mean? Like you said, <laughs> just know, just say stop. You know what I mean? It's, it's, it's in you. And I know it's in me because I got some praying. I had some praying grandmamas and, and mamas. You know what I mean? I, I really do know that. I mean, that I do know, and and I believe in that that power of the ancestors that are carrying me through, you know, with the line of uh, you know, my family tree line. So with my my great aunts and my aunt and my mom and my grand grandmother. So so it's okay, you know. And like I said, I tell my daughter, you know, I'm just I'm. She's such a beautiful. She's getting married, Ashley, because I stopped singing when she was three. Oh, so she kind of felt like she was the reason. And I, I was like, mm -hmm. oh, no, baby. You know, she's like, I wish I was like, no, I said I wouldn't trade it for anything because she's she's doing amazing. She's getting married um, May 20th. Oh, she's wow. uh, she's doing great. She's so I'm excited. And um, I was like, at least you look, I'm glad you didn't turn out to be uh, just a you know what? Because I would have really been like, was this sacrifice? <laughs> Uh, man come on right, man. yeah like, i sacrificed all this and you wouldn't oh you already know girl <laughs> no but she's a, she's amazing uh she really is she's she doesn't want to be in the business she's uh she's actually she doesn't want to be in music but she's in casting so she does okay. she does casting for some realities and and she's a big wig at pinterest now so, oh, mm -hmm. well, so congratulations. Ashley Lewis, follow her if you want to be in reality shows. Ashley Lewis on Instagram, on IG, and Facebook. Mm -hmm. Couple of more things, as I know you got to get out of here. Now, okay. when you started Karen White Entertainment, uh, and I, I briefly talked to you when I spoke to you and met you, are you still looking for artists right now? Talk to me a little bit about oh. that. Well, that was, yeah, actually, that was Supernova. That was under Supernova, which I just started in 2020. We signed a hip-hop artist, conscious artist, by the name of Akbar the Great. And um, it was tough. I mean, uh, I don't know if I want to do it. <laughs> oh, I was wow. like, oh. you know, it's, it's uh, but I, I really, you know, I believed in his message because I heard WAP, and I was just like, 
Come on, man. Is that how we reduced ourselves to wet AP? I was like, and then when I heard he had a, you know, a song that touched me called Young Righteous Black Girl. And I was like, what? Young brother, 23 years, 24 years old is writing about a young righteous black girl. But, and so I was like, I got to put this record out, you know, and it's a dope record and people loved it. You know, we did a video and it's, it's out there. So look for that Agbar the Great, Agbar the G8 on, uh, you could hear his music on YouTube. So I don't know if I, you know, it, it, it'll, it'll, you know, sometimes I have, I have passion projects, you know what I'm saying? But it's, you know, I love the, I love, you know, being with the youth because that's what keeps me youthful. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? I don't want to feel dated. And so I love, we did a, we did a du little duet together. So I don't know if I'm going to do it. I'm sure I will. I want to get more into film though. So oh. Yeah, so we if I did, you know, I would probably do more projects like that. So that's what I'm looking for. But I want to be successful. You know how we talked about we don't want to just, you know, just keep being doing businesses. You know what I mean? I wanna I told Derek, I was like, I wanna, I'm I'm ready, I'm ready for some success. And um, so I'm I'm just gonna wait on God because that's the thing about me, Candy. I'm a I'm a go-getter, but sometimes God didn't tell me to go. I get that. I get that. And if it, it might feel right, but then it might not really be right. Exactly. It's just because I love being busy, but it's like, did I tell you to do that? Mm -hmm. So, you know, so I'm I'm not talking about necessarily Agbar, but I mean anything. So I'm really being picky. First of all, financially, it's expensive, you know, mm -hmm. to do because, you know, marketing is, you know, just because you can put out a record, that's easy. It's the promotion. You know, but um, so I'm just like waiting on the right thing, and um, I know when it is. It's like he'll let me know when it is, but but right now we're I'm just like I said I'm getting back out here on the road, so you guys can catch me coming to your in your city in your funky town. Um, uh, I'm probably gonna be doing the Tom Joyner cruise, hopefully. So mm -hmm. if y'all are gonna be going to that in September, you'll see me there. Uh, um, and I'll be doing more shows. I'm going to be doing some city wineries, doing some stuff for Keith Washington. Um, and shout out to Keith Washington and the amazing Shantae Moore, who lit up the Soul Train Awards, didn't she? Yes, she <laughs> did. Like everybody <laughs> said, she left it on stage. It just was so oh, effortlessly. I know. Just a woo, just bad girl. Yeah. So I'm glad she's having success. And she's showing these young girls, huh? <laughs> I'm like, Shantae look amazing. She's showing these young girls how to do it. <laughs> so anyway, yeah, I'll be, we're looking forward to, to, you know, touring. So you can catch me. That'll be the first place. And then we'll, we'll talk about the foundation. You guys go to KarenWhiteFoundation.com. Check out my movie, GailInTheStorm.com and KarenWhite.me. Go there. Say, hey, if you saw me on the candy show, who knows? They send you something. So, um, Karen White me, drop me a message and follow me on Karen White on uh, official Karen White on IG and Facebook. And thank you, Candy. We did oh, that, didn't we? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Carpe diem. Carpe diem. I know that's a bad record. And Candy was so cool. Candy was like, no, I don't want to do the interview. I want to do it right. I have it all set up. I was like, go ahead, girl. Okay. <laughs> I would have like, loved. I would have loved to do it in person, but I just knew it wasn't the right time yeah. for either one of us. So I hope that yeah. I get the opportunity. So I'm, glad we, I'm glad we made it happen and, and you were able to, you know, we were able to do it. Thank you so much. I appreciate you. You are so welcome and good luck. I know you have nothing, but I'm going to tell you what, I, I'm a dancer. So, uh, Every time oh, and yeah. I, yes, so you told me that. Yes, I'm just like, oh my gosh, Karen White, and she came out with the dancers. Yes, thank you so much. So, guys, I, make okay. sure. <laughs> Look, I gotta have you up there next time. Be like, come on, Candy, break it down. Come, come on. on. You come like, on. come on. <laughs> I'm taking. I'm saying. Look, then, I will call you up now, <laughs> and I will take that offer real quick, fast and hurry. But thank you so much. I know, Miss Karen, why you have other things that you need to get to. And I greatly appreciate your time. Thank you. Uh, hopefully God will put us in the place, the same place again soon. Definitely. Yes. And and happy holidays or whatever it is. Just yes. 
spiritual time, whatever, just being with family. So yes, thank ma'am. you. Yes, ma'am. Well, guys, thank you so much for another episode of the Candy Show. Please make sure you follow the legend, the icon, Miss Karen White. Guys, and also make sure that you are subscribed to the YouTube page, capital C in the number two. That is capital C in the number two. Please make sure you follow the official Instagram page. That is Candy Talk Show. Again, that's Candy Talk Show. Guys, once again, thank you so much.